Welcome to Hospitality 360 on uh, number 34. And obviously, it's a revolutionary day, one way or another. We've got the Bates clan in the house. And then Evie, Three of them. CDX uh, partnered today. So to deliver the crypto trade floors around the world. Uh, thanks to Brian J. Esposito for putting the partnership together and the introduction there. So it's been a great day for EV Hotel. And, you know, it's going to be an amazing, amazing show today. Um, I want to just introduce our special guest on the show, Gianna. Gianna, if you want to just introduce yourself to our audience. Of course. Thanks so much for having me, Ken, and everybody else here. So honored to be on 360. Um, so about me, um, I've you know been running corporate events for brands like Google and AWS and SoftBank Vision Fund for the past 20 plus years. Um, in 2019, I took a lot of my learnings and published uh, my first book, The Art of Event Planning, uh, right in time to avoid COVID. So um, it was, you know, it was awesome to get that book out into the world. But I just re recently launched an e-course called Million Dollar Event Planning Career as a follow on to the book, because so much has happened over the past years, as we all know, there's just been a sea change in our entire industry. Um, and we've learned so much in the past two years. So one of the reasons that I launched an e-course as opposed to a sequel to the book is because people are digesting content differently. And so just like we're doing this, you know, live um, event right now, I think people absorb content a lot better when they can be more interactive with it and engaged with it. So that's just a, a few little nuggets about me. You can find more about me at giannagaudini.com and drop me a line. Love to get to know you. Yeah, and Gianna and I are going to be doing a Q&A on the next or probably the following Hospitality 360 newsletter and obviously the amazing things that she's coming out with and a lot of educational aspects are tied into it. So thank you, Gianna. Uh, Brian J. Esposito. Yeah. Yo. The Bates King is in the house. <laughs> hey, guys. Pleasure to be here. Gianna, welcome. Incredible history, and the best is always still yet to come. Of uh, course. So let's, <laughs> let's, let's rock and roll. Do you want me to give a little intro again? Yeah, Ken? of course. Of course. All right, let's try to do this quick. So Brian J. Esposito, <laughs> CEO and founder of Esposito Intellectual Enterprises. It's a holding company wholly owned by me. There's presently now over 85 entities in it, operating over 25 different industries and proudly accumulated 150 plus joint ventures around the world. My main goal is always creating value, creating win-win partnerships for all parties involved, whether it's the principles at a table all the way down to the consumer or guest experiences as it relates to the, the hotel and hospitality industry. Uh, now honored to be a founding partner of BAPES, which has become a viral number one growing organic <laughs> Uh, NFT project that has just taken the world by storm. We have a couple of BAPES business ambassadors on this call, Ken Patel, Stephanie Malik, uh, doing amazing things there, changing the game. And it's great to now have a massive NFT community that the EV Hotel brand can um, bring together, which is exciting. They can they understand the space. They can experience the NFTs in the lobby or in the hotel rooms and also a really exclusive elite place for them to gather and uh, and and build keep continue to build that community. So honored to be here. Also incredible news that happened today with CDX and EV Hotel. I'm sure Ken will go into more detail about that. But uh, my favorite word, Jeff, is momentum. We got tons of momentum here, my man. That was one of our first chats together on on this great show. And now it's up to this great team to to keep it moving, keep it growing, and keep the excitement there. Thank you, Brian. Obviously, you know. The entire team has worked so hard, including yourself, on on even putting this together. And so, I agree. Momentum. Oh yeah. Well, I think that CDX was uh, six months of proper strategizing. I mean, we, a lot of work went into that. We didn't we didn't just make an announcement. It was incredible team. Um, it just you know, it, uh, great things happen with you have great people behind it. A lot of spreadsheets. <laughs> that, that was you. I'm like, yeah, that looked great. I can right. imagine. That was a good looking spreadsheet, Ken, and I just swipe it away. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. 
Calvin Stovall. Yes, sir, man. Thank you. Excited to be here as always. Um, I'm on Hospitality 360. Um, welcome, Gianna. Glad to have you here. It's good to see Steph back and Brian, of course, and of course, Jeff. Um, I'm just excited about everything that happened today. It's just wonderful. Um, Jess, I know we've been, you know, behind the scenes talking about it was coming, it was coming, and today it, it was birthed. And um, I'm just excited to be a part of it, um, you know, and, and just happy to work with such a fantastic team. So this is just a, a highlight to Black History Month in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, you yes, know, sir. it's been mm -hmm. a great month. And, um, you know, now got a book coming out next year and all that stuff. So, man, it's just oh, been February, been on fire for me, man. I think it's been <laughs> iconic. It's mistaken. been iconic. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, now, all I need to do is add the baits to my, to my, to my, you know, signature. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I just want to tell everybody as well, when we made the announcement, our PR team said currently at, at a, I think it was at noon, uh, we were at 10 million views uh, for the announcement. So wow. amazing, amazing <laughs> stuff. So Stephanie Malik. Hello. Ken, I will tell you this. I was on two podcasts today <clears throat> and I well, said- I made it. I, Set, I said it on both podcasts, um, both about the announcements and EV and also about the Bapes clan. So um, I'm just so proud to be here with you guys. So Stephanie Malik, um, founder and CEO of S. Malik Enterprises, human behavior consulting firm dealing with optimal and prime performance for executives and entrepreneurs, um, high, impact, high impact coaching and consulting, and also um, an awful lot of work around crisis and crisis management, keeping people off um, or outside of the media, paparazzi, PR, anything that's negative, and letting them deal with that in common discernment behind closed doors. Awesome. Yeah, and obviously, thank you for the support on, on the podcast that weren't even involved with us, but thank you, Stephanie. Absolutely. Uh, Jeff Driscoll. Yeah, I'll be short. Uh, Jeff Driscoll, six-year NFL veteran. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, quarterback and tight end, so uh, versatile on the football field. I uh, hope to be versatile off the field as well. Uh, Chief Impact Officer with EV Hotels, uh, where I work to create relationships, um, you know, with EV and the communities that we serve. So uh, it's been an exciting day, and looking forward to uh, everything we talk about. And, and Calvin's big smile. He won't. He won't get it off. I can't get the <laughs> off the screen. I, know, I need I got sunglasses. <laughs> sunglasses <here. laughs> yeah. Shining. Good day, man. Good day. Awesome. Awesome. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. So I kind of want to go into our our segment that we start out the show. And, you know, it's it's the question, right? Question of the week is, what is your favorite quote, quote of 2022 so far? And I'll kind of go the other way this time is, so Jeff, you ended, now you start. Yeah, so I'm not sure if this quote was uh, spoken or typed or whatever in 2022, but it's new to me in 2022. And it's uh, David Goggins, who I listen to all of his content. He's an unbelievable speaker, a great story. And the, and the quote is, you are in danger of living a life so comfortable and soft that you will die without ever realizing your true potential. And that's just so true with where we are right now. Uh, you got to get out of your comfort zone to, uh, to be, to, to create and to innovate. So, um, you know, I thought that was where we are as a company and where I am individually. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Stephanie? I think the thing for me is just simplicity this year. And I think the best time to start was maybe last year, but the new best time to start is now. Um, I think we're always so focused on the future that we don't actually start and we're trying to prepare so much. And I think that if we just start and we actually surround ourselves with really incredible people and uh, people that we highly align with, um, I think that our ventures will get as big as our hearts. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, Gianna? <clears throat> okay, my quote for 2022 would be, don't wait until the conditions are perfect to begin. Beginning makes the conditions perfect. And oh, I think that that is appropriate for 2022 because as we all know, this pandemic is kind of seesawing all over the place. And at some point you just need to move on. Um, and we need to, I, I think personally also, um, I just encourage people to get started 
getting started is the hardest part. And then once you get started, you kind of pick up momentum and learn along the way. Absolutely. Thank you, Gianna. Uh, Calvin? Um, I don't really have. I mean, I, I try to think of something to say, but I'm like, I don't really have any. Calvin's just smiling. That's no, right. right. I'm, just right. Happy. I'm just happy. Right, right there, Calvin, you nailed it. Honesty. Yeah, no BS. I'm just keeping it real. I don't have no BS. Yeah. Nailed it. I'm just no happy, man. I'm just happy to be alive. Yeah. And so I, yeah, I'm just transparent. Look, that's someone's got something for you, Sylvia. Sylvia's got <laughs> momentum, <laughs> baby. That, I love that. I like that. That's my. That's the quote for 2022. Momentum, baby. Like momentum, that. baby. That's Thank you, it. Calvin. I like right. That. Uh, I'm gonna give you a great quote. Uh, of course. You ready? It's such a good quote. You're going to oh, love no. the guy that said it. It's <laughs> this is about time. I know it. It's oh, man. Okay, so you, you can be an overnight success if you wake up the next day a little bit smarter, stronger, and wiser. Mm. Isn't that okay. good? Yeah, it's That's awesome. good. That works. Who said that? That Who sounds like that? a toast. That sounds like a toast. <laughs> or, or this one. It's better to put on a pair of slippers mm. Than to carpet the entire world. Stuart Smalley, anybody? Old SNL. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Look at you. I love that one. It's great. That's what Sorry. I got. That's what I got. Come on, Ken. Lay it on us. Yeah. Give us give I us don't that. I don't really have <laughs> <laughs> I I was probably gonna say, I mean, normally I I started this journey and I had that quote, and I'm still gonna have that same quote is dreams are goals you know so and i'm just gonna keep going along with it is even if whatever dream i have i'm still making it a goal so yeah that's cool i'll just keep going along with it but you know thank you guys obviously great quotes um something to learn from from each and every one of you and i'm sure our audience is thinking the same thing so let's kind of dive right into it um hospitality women being executives um it's very it's not unheard of but it's also not heard of and castell project uh they do a phenomenal job in the industry uh this is the fifth year that they've came out with this report you know for uh, for me i want to see more women as executives the current trend part of this project is one out of ten women versus men so basically we don't have enough women compared to how many men we have as executive ceo cfo coos and that's an improvement from 2019 i think or 2021 the number was that it was one out of 11. still that to me is not an improvement that's basically just moving up one one man you know so 22 percent speak at investment conferences that's up from 16 percent from 2017. the problem here that i find that seems to be the biggest issue is the enrollments we're having into universities colleges not alone not only women but also men for the hospitality industry so this number is not going to change. I feel like it's just it's actually now going to decrease as with the labor component where we a million people quit their jobs in hospitality alone in November. So I'll, I'll start with you, Brian, first. I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, well, two thoughts. I mean, the idea of women executives in hospitality, if you go back into traditional roles of which I'm, I'm, you know, a typical man and a woman in a household, that household experience was always maintained by, by the by the woman and then and, and things have changed a, a lot which is great women are you know excelling across every type of industry they want to get in especially the nft and crypto space they've you know they were able to start in an industry with with uh, a man right so that's great they started mm -hmm. at an even even playing field and what they're doing there is amazing so what i'm going to tie into that idea of an increase in uh, participation in the space i think it cover goes into the metaverse and what's happening in crypto because Christian and I of Mancini Duffy were talking the other day. I think there's going to be a giant burst in engineers and architects, but not needing to go to school or be licensed. They could do it at home from their computer and build in the metaverse. And I think that's going to inspire them 
to then go into school and actually build in real life. And I think we're going to see something happening across many different industries, especially um, what you're talking about, getting enrollment. And I think if they can start to play in the field virtually and understand what it's like to make somebody feel good or what it's like to you know, in enhance somebody's experience somewhere, that, that's what I always love when I start my companies. It's, it's bringing real value and, and changing somebody's day a little bit for the better. If you can be part of that formula, it's such a rewarding feeling. So I do think this massive movement in blockchain, crypto, and, and, and the metaverse is going to inspire a lot of activity virtually that will trickle down mm -hmm. into into real life uh, jobs and and um, and and an increase increase want to be in those industries. Absolutely, I, I I couldn't agree with more with you on that, Brian. Um, Calvin. Um, yeah, when I when I read that article, I do I do think there's we still have a long way to go um, as an industry, particularly with women in leadership positions, and you say the same for African Americans, Latina, all that. So, um, but but what was what was most alarming to me in that as well was that whole about the low enrollment, and and I I, I think this is what happened today, and I got to bring it up. This this is what people are looking for: excitement in industries. So, I mean, it just has been stagnant for so long, um, you know, and, and so sometimes you just have to reinvent to get people re-energized in something. And I think once, once people see that there's really a future and some excitement going on in the industry and things are moving in a positive direction, people will start enrolling and in, in, in starting to get more, you know, increased interest in this industry. I just think it's been so kind of boring. It's just been boring. Um, well, you, must, so, you must be talking about that excitement of the 10 million views of that new hotel opened. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, oh, but, I but forgot to do an EV plug. I'm but sorry, what, but, but, but like what Brian was saying, too, all of this stuff in the metaverse and, and all of these <laughs> virtual reality experiences, I think all of that stuff added together, that's, where, that's what's going to excite people. And I think maybe we'll start seeing some movement in that direction. People got to see a future in something. Yeah, and I absolutely. just think things had to change, and and we're part of that change, and that's what's exciting. So. Yeah, yeah, Cal Calvin, on that point, not to interrupt you, Gianna, but remember when social media came came to be? You know, no enterprise or corporation no. had a job function or a role for that; they had to adapt to that, and that's what I was getting at. There's going to be a new job function for that metaverse experience, or you know what you can do in VR inside mm -hmm. of hospitality, and that mm -hmm. that's the correlation of driving youth, driving new excitement. So I, uh, I think, I think it's the new role that these companies have to create is going to, is going to help. Yeah. And to further yeah. that, Brian, another role that I'm seeing crop up a lot more in the tech space, I'm not sure about the hotel industry, you all tell me, but the chief diversity officer yeah. role, and yep. you can bet they're not going to be hiring mm -hmm. a white male for that role. So I see that being a great opportunity for women to step up to the C-suite, to, you know, kind of to Calvin's points and also to further um, the points of the article, I think mentorship and inspiring the next generation is the only way that we're going to inspire change. Mm -hmm. So female leaders have a massive undertaking because they not only are the minority, up, you know, in the C-suite on boards. Um, fortunately, you know, we're making some progress, mm -hmm. but they also have to take the time for mentorship, for sponsoring that next generation, for being yeah. role models so that women in hospitality realize that they don't necessarily just need to be order takers or, you know, in positions that they traditionally have held. Mm -hmm. You can get a, an MBA and be in hospitality in mm -hmm. a business role. Mm -hmm. But women need need to understand what options are available to them and see other women in those roles in order to follow suit. Yeah. Man, so my, my MBA took me 24 years to <laughs> open a business. <laughs> I never got mine. You're ahead of me. <laughs> but you're also starting to see a lot of women take 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 it things into their own hands too. They're not, they're not waiting on corporate America, man. Yeah. yeah. I'm seeing more and more. They're doing it out there, man. I, I mean, if you look on LinkedIn, these ladies are killing it out. Yeah. Crushing it as man, Brian. What? As, yeah, as Brian would oh, say. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and then you have some of them, you know. I mean, even in the industry, like, you know, the Bond Reeves and ladies like that, that are. Oh, well, I love her. She inspiring is inspiring other people yeah. 
to get involved in the hospitality industry. Uh, there's a lot of uh, travel, um, uh, people in the travel industry, particularly women, just creating their own lanes. And I love that. I love they don't have to be corporate America. You can do it a different way. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Ms. Malik. So can I'll say a couple things. The first thing is, is we're not as blessed. Um, some of the hotel chains are not as blessed to have such an amazing founder and CEO like you that is that, you know, that's open to, to new things. Yeah. Um, I was, I was really actually very interesting that, 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 that Calvin brought up the, um, the enrollment um, piece of things, because in working with these hotels, like I have over the years, y- you guys know, I'm a pretty strong person and I, I'm not a shrinking violet and I'll go in and I'll say, what is this? And and they're ready. They're prepared. Ken, they'll sit down and they'll go, Hey, look at, check out our applications for this role. And there is not a woman there is, there is, and, and I'm sitting back listening and I'm looking at, and like these qualified women that are, that are elegant, that are really well put together, that know so many things about so many different departments and they're not going for those jobs. They're not. And so when we kind of took a step back and we put together a, um, a diversity and like a coaching performance plan for these, these individuals, they didn't, the women, the, the, Mm -hmm highly educated women or the women that had been in industry for so long that could create so much value. They didn't want the spots. They didn't want it. They didn't want to work every weekend. They didn't want to work every holiday. They didn't want to be away from their family. They didn't want any aspect of the actual management piece. So for me, it was a different perspective. How do we switch the culture within the environment? How do we switch the hospitality culture to where we can actually be presentable and knowing those holidays, those weekends, those evenings are actually going to be covered because so many women can do their jobs remotely now with all the technology that we have. So I think that not having the confidence to go for those type of positions. And then as Calvin just said again, and not even wanting them, like there was just no enrollment. I think my second point that I would bring out to to jump on to Gianna is the diversity roles that are coming out, the chief diversity officer roles that are coming out. I'm seeing those people frustrated. They take the role and you see these people and they are so excited. And they, I mean, I'm literally getting phone calls of people screaming at 11 o'clock going, I got this job. I'm going to impact. I'm going to affect change now to find in four months. There's no budget. It was a title only. There's no development funds around it. There's no team around it. Like, what do you do? Like, what is it actually that you do? So you see these people that are so willing to kind of jump in and make a change, but they, they don't understand the the C-suite doesn't understand. How do you stack these people up? How do you line them up and how do you support them? How do you get them in a position to lead? And so we have so much to do with working with the CEOs and the C-suites to actually get them educated on being a CEO and a founder like you, open to new ideas, open to not always doing it the way it's always been done, but actually really impacting and affecting change. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great point, Stephanie. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because a lot of organizations do it as a checkbox. Yeah, that's right. Tokenism. Yeah, yep. and, and that's, that's the thing that's that's really hard. hard. People I mean, see right through it. I've seen that in the last three weeks, where these 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 men with with just I mean, and African American, Hispanic, and then I there was a really great friend who's an Asian um, female who's a, who's amazing, and they've fallen flat in six to nine months in a position. They're so frustrated they're like and these are huge companies these are fortune 100 companies and they're like chief diversity officer and i'm like oh god i'm like this is good i'm like that's great (laughs) and then then nothing happens and they feel so bummed out that they really wanted to make the change so stephanie do you think that's because there's not the support for it internally or because the role is so new that people in the role don't know how to build up the kind of program, the kind of support, the kind of infrastructure that they need to roll it out successfully. So amazing, amazing question. For these three specific people, these people, this is all they do. They build out teams. They understand metrics. They understand how to get enrollment. Even even for things, Gianna, even for things that don't need millions and millions of dollars to fund. In fact, we research has proven that the smaller um, dollar amount, the smaller value and the more traction are the things that actually get pulled, um, pulled in for success. And so, no, I don't, I don't think that at all. I think that it's really, I think it's a token position. I don't necessarily Mm want to come out right now at this moment and say, I think it's an intentional token position, 
But I think right now it's a token position. These guys know these guys, women, females, male, these people, they know how to go out and make a difference. And they're just not being allowed to either by budget restrictions or by, oh, yeah, that's really, really a great idea. Let's see how things mm -hmm. go. What yeah. is see how things go? You hired me for this job. What are you expecting me to do in six months? The the other thing that, you know, <clears throat> Stephanie, you would get, obviously, the executives here, the intentions there, the budget's there. Yeah. But then the legal comes in mm -hmm. and that, that hijacks everything. Sure you know, does. That takes, that takes the, I, I've never met a risk adverse lawyer in my life. No. Uh, they, I mean, their whole job is to tell you no, but, and then that register is ringing and the calculator is going. That's exactly no, right. No, but. And then I get it <clears throat> because that you know so, they're always they're always in my pocket. So <laughs> if uh, love, love you lawyers, you're you're great. You do your job great. But also, also Brian's like I'll whitelist you. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not because they're going to bill me for the text right, and the email exactly. going back and forth. Um, I love I love the legal profession. There's great people and like everything else. But someone in that position wants to do all those great things. They have to submit it mm -hmm. to somebody yep. to compliance to legal, <clears throat> and then. It's just easier to say no because That's it comes right. back with all this. Yeah, you know, they're not. They don't know those comments or what that no. means or how to overcome that. Uh, so sometimes it's just easier to say, "I got bills. I got a family. I got a job. I don't even know how to respond to the the, the response I just got." So they just they just back off. So you know, that legal component in, in a corporation is. It's a very important role. It protects the corporation. It protects the stakeholders. It protects everything. But to try to make change in that environment is very difficult, and, and it means it means somebody that was that needs to push through that. Yeah, and it's, yeah. It's, it's not an easy mentality, but you know there are some and, that do for sure. And Brian, and to your point, Brian, to your point, that's usually who I get the call from. I generally get the call from legal going stuff. Show us how to do this so we aren't like you know getting in trouble. Yeah. And, and I'm, I, you know, obviously the agendas are different. The C-suite is different than legal. So just bringing together those agendas and making it effective and impactful to, for the people. Like, it's like, why are we doing this? We don't want to just check a box. We actually want to make a true difference. Yes. We, and you have to, Brian, just like you said, we have to go into how much does it cost us every single time we lose a valuable employee to go rehire that employee? Yeah. What does that look like? And when you do a yes. cost analysis, then you see the attorneys actually start to listen. You yeah. see them go, yes. okay, yep. let's take a step back. We need well, more no, strong then, women. Then you see the accountant starting to listen. Yep. And the right. accountant say to the attorneys, I'm not That's paying right. you anymore. So again, there's all these freaking voices involved <laughs> yeah. and yep. all yeah. these processes. So you know, anybody that wants to make a change that gets that position, you're not alone. It's a tough role. Absolutely. Um, but, if, but if you want to push through, start small. You know, yep. you, those big ideas are great. Get there. Find little little tweaks you can do, little changes. It helps you feel good about your time, helps you feel good about like you made a difference. A year later, two years later, you can get to those big changes. But just yep. scale it back a little bit, unless you're also the legal chief, chief legal officer and the chief diversity officer. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then you're, you're winning. The you can do anything. Then you're winning. Yeah, you can yeah. do what you want then. Yeah. <laughs> then I, didn't mean, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Stephanie, but right. then, no, it, no, it, no. then it's the accountant that is your friend because they're going to enforce we're not paying your bill unless we get it. Yeah. And yeah. to further all all those points and some comment that was flying around in, you know, in the comment stream, when I was building and running Google's women's event strategy, you know, back years ago, I was having a really tough time getting yeah. traction until I switched my approach and I led with business outcomes yeah. and why leaning into DEI strategy for the company was actually good for business for various reasons. One, the retention issue that Stephanie is talking about, you know, it's so expensive to lose your employees. B, there are companies that will not do business with other companies if they yes. do not have yeah. a, a solid, authentic DEI program in place. That's business that they will take elsewhere. And then C, women are decision makers in many households. A lot, you know, in the hospitality industry, women, I mean, I'm the one that book, I, I book all my hotels for our mm -hmm. family trips, um, you know, and so we need to cater to decision makers that are female and having females in business positions gives that diverse perspective that can positively Absolutely. influence the business outcomes as well. So it's, it's strategic. It's not, it shouldn't just be tokenism to check a box. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Gianna, you know what? The last thing I'll say about this, Ken, and then I'll totally shut up about it. Sorry, you. Know, know you're this. <laughs> um, is is that you know? I'm also too not all pro and raw raw women. I'm not that way at all. I'm pro and raw raw humans. We need Same. men as allies. Exactly. We everybody just go, divides them, and they're like, "Oh, men, no men, help us." I don't yeah. want enemies as men. I want I want to explain it, and I want to have a trusted advisor. I want to have somebody who's going to go out and fight with me, alongside of me, as a partner, as a couple, to go do this. It's not yeah. us or them. It's together as one. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's a hundred percent true. Yeah, you got to do that DEI thing for the right reason. <laughs> this just right. has to have the right yeah. the right Absolutely. why behind it, and not because George Floyd was killed. Right. That's not the right. reason. Yeah. So absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's all about change end of the day. Mm-hmm. So exactly. We have to mathematically bring it to a balance. Absolutely. And so Jeff Dreskel, I think the team really picked a great article because we've been on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a hot one right there, man. I'll be brief. <laughs> um, I mean, in my day to day in the last couple teams I've been on. Um, There's been female coaches, which is like super dominated by men. Obviously, it's an intimidating arena for women to walk into. And I've I've enjoyed, you know, the women that have uh, been in coaching positions for two reasons. They were qualified and they helped me to be a better football player. That was what I cared about. And, um, you know, that at the end of the day, that's what matters. And they're kind of put in a place where the younger generation can see them excelling at the highest level. So I think that gets, uh, you know, the younger generation uh, excited about that profession. So that's that's kind of the parallel in my world. Beautiful, beautiful. I mean, I know I know it looks like the NFL's uh, switching gears. You know, I know my Giants are obviously they just hired a woman's coach, I think, from the Bills as well. So, yeah, if you can do your job well, what I mean, come on, I'm all for it. You I know, you know, I help try to make players better. Yeah, coach, coach me all you want. I'm, I'm all ears. Make me better. But also, too, Jeff, to that point, also too, if you're not like, I'm not afraid to be like, okay, it's a woman, but she doesn't know her stuff either. Like, I'm not afraid to right. say that is not a good idea, and yeah. right. probably need right. to. Like, right. it's not a man yeah. or a woman thing. It's like right. you do not belong there in that like, position. Yeah. The first yeah. thing I yes. said, they were qualified and yeah. they did it well. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, I try to get a job at Lifetime Fitness where I work out, but they said I'm not qualified. <laughs> they, should, they, they should check your social what? media. What are they talking about? <laughs> I was they like, should. all right, I'll, uh, I might have to hit the gym a few more. Days. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, some of those, some of those trainers don't look that great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but good stuff. Thank you, guys. So obviously, we've got. The Bates clan mixed in with our clan and the EV clan and then the CDX clan. <laughs> all the clans are in the house today. So we're going to take it to one piece that might put all these clans together is the metaverse. Oh, and yeah. how is luxury travel going to be affected by the metaverse? Um, so people are going to ask, what is the metaverse, right? What does that even mean? What is it going to do? So for the people that don't know what the metaverse is, it's a VR world where you can navigate freely with other people to play, work, and do so many other things, anything you want to do, right? What does luxury travel have to do with this? It's going to help people choose their destinations more wisely, going to give you unique brand experience and at think of this and i don't know who's gonna like this but how about avatar based travel agents i don't know love it people are gonna feel about Mm -hmm. that but i love it i'll go to obviously the babes leader you know Mr. Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Bates. Planet, of the Apes. Planet of the Bapes. Planet of the Bapes. Just got sued. Planet of the Bapes. Planet of the Bapes. <laughs> Planet. Maybe, maybe. Maybe. We're still trying to figure that out, but Ken, you just, just threw a lawsuit at us. So thank I you. know. <laughs> Brian, That's Brian, thank my God karma that lawyer's in your, in your pocket. That, that right. Stephanie's got you covered. So, so quick. Now. You better let that lawyer out of your pocket. <laughs> it's gone. 
Um, oh, I, don't know. I don't even know what you said. I just got Do, I, do I lose my ambassador role for that you one? You might have just got the act. Um, yeah, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about the well, metaverse. What do, you, what, do you think of, hmm. what do you think of the metaverse and what do you think it's going to do for travel itself? Yeah, so we, we've been building this space for a long time. One of the – we lost Ken? Bye, Ken. Oh, boy. All right, anyway. Wow, he really yeah. did get the ax, Brian. You, you are don't. powerful. I tell yeah. you what, you wow, don't how did mess you do with that? me. Do not mess with <laughs> He's me. He's often meta. It's that Sicilian in me. It comes out very strong. <laughs> like, You're Sicilian, Man, too? I didn't talk, realize talk that. Yeah. Yay. Corleone and uh, Cal Calabrese. <laughs> so we'll talk about that offline. Go okay. Italianos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, here's Brian's what's like, What's the question again? No, I got it. Here, here's, what, here's what's fun. We were – hey, Ken. We were hey. – we were built so Somnian Space, I think, is one of the better VR worlds out there. There's Sandbox, Essential Land, a lot of there'll be a ton of them, which is great. Uh, Somnium Space just got a great investment and backing by Gemini and the Winklevoss twins. So it's an, mm. I, I, I just think it, I think they're doing it right. We'll put it that way. So you know, for three years, we're trying to tell people you got to get your brand in the metaverse, and they're like, Leave me alone, scram kid, you're bothering me. So now everybody wants to be in, which is great. But my biggest fear, and I say all the time, is it's got to be done right. You know, you don't you don't just throw a brand or a piece of IP in the metaverse and expect it to be a success for the brand or ultimately enhance the the consumer or the user's experience. That's the ultimate goal. So if you bring it back to luxury travel, and one of the things that we we just announced with Bapes Bapes Clan and Ricky Cinema's company, who's also a Bapes ambassador, Starjets, is the idea of luxury travel which is great, but most people that are doing luxury travel, maybe they, they uh, charter a private jet. So in that business model, you have the private jet, which Babes will digitize that IP, bring it into the metaverse, uh, create new value and revenue for that jet owner, which is a very high cost asset from buying the plane, maintenance, certification, fueling it, staffing it, pilots, all the, all the bells and whistles. If we can show revenues for the, the jet owner to win, you know, that plane can sit there, but we can bring it in the metaverse for people to experience it that never were able to experience it before. Now, it gets even more fun where the jet owners are typically very wealthy business people, professional athletes, entertainers, musicians, influencers. Now, if you can have that experience enhanced even more where whoever is in the metaverse that's experienced as a private jet, maybe they can be in the metaverse or in VR with the owner of that jet. So you start to build that bond. And then you bring, I always say you got to bring it back to real life. You know, you can spend 24 hours a day in the metaverse, but you got to eat, you got to drink, you got to go out a little bit and you got to get clothes. So you have to bring some of this stuff back into real life, which is take that same business model and concept, new experiences, uh, monetizing IP, but giving that metaverse user the chance now to possibly experience that jet in real life and maybe uh, have a, a unique experience with the jet owner that never would have happened if we didn't bring real life into VR and bridge the gap. So the same thing, like you said, Ken, for luxury travel, you're going to do the same type of model done correctly and have people that are in VR experience locations, spas, resorts, uh, destinations that they never would have even imagined to experience. And then just have this urge to want to really go there. It's one thing to look on Instagram and see a bunch of people having mm -hmm. a good time. But now mm -hmm. if you can be immersed in it and you can actually really see here some things you can even feel there's a great company called tesla suit you can put on this mm -hmm. amazing suit that's attached to your vr experience and you can actually feel some of the experiences um you know smell and other things i think is a, is a long way off but anything to get it as close as possible to real life to make you want to experience it in real life that's pretty cool to me but you still have to monetize it you know there has to be that mechanism where the company and the ip is properly monetized mm -hmm. so it's not just noise it's not just throwing something into the air and and having no real story or connection to it yeah i, I totally agree and i i also find a metaverse to be almost like an automation tool right it's it's obviously instead of going and finding pictures of somewhere of an island now you can be on the island right experience it so it's a it's it's a great thing i, I can't wait ev hotel the best hotel in the metaverse pretty soon should i say that brian i don't know if i should say that sure <laughs> so. you said it i didn't i didn't say it <laughs> brian's like the other attorney comes out of the other <laughs> <laughs> how many pockets do you have brian yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no. Calvin? <laughs> uh, the, I, I want to just say that article was probably, I mean, I knew what Metaverse was to some extent, but that mm -hmm. article explained it to me so well that I totally got it. So all the listeners today, when we send this newsletter out, that Metaverse article was great because I was able to blend in my, you know, because I have two little boys. One of my boys plays Roblox all the time. All my money goes into Roblox. <laughs> so, so he plays Roblox. And then, and then I thought about, because, you know, the whole virtual reality thing. I remember about five years ago, my younger brother brought a PlayStation VR thing to me. And, and I'm telling you, it, it, it blew my mind. And, and I know it's advanced way since then. And, and, and I remember putting it on and it was a Cirque du Soleil experience. Yeah. And I promise you, I felt okay. like I was there. It was just so, so immersive that it kind of freaks you out at first. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was just like, but, but when I read the article, it just took me into like, wow, this could be great. I mean, it's going to be I mean, fantastic. And I love just the idea. It could be used for so many things. You know, even with, when I was with Homewood, when we did consumer research and we had to walk people through prototypes to see which one they, you could use that for, I mean, even for research. They don't even have to come. They can, you can do consumer research with the metaverse. Yeah. They don't even I have love to that. I yeah, love yeah. that use case. You know, I mean, they could, so I mean, they could have them walk through stuff and, and get feedback from them. And it's like right there. Yeah, with AB the test in the metaverse. Yes, right? you can test Why? in the metaverse. I was like, man. It's so smart. So I, I, I just that. thought about, I just think it's going to be wonderful. So, so Calvin, yeah. on that point, back to Mancini Duffy, one of the reasons why they're involved in EV Hotel is the architect and design. They own patents on VR and they do that collaborative design work for that experience, not the A-B testing for the guests. Well, in a way, but making sure that before they go into construction and development, are the shelves the right height for the cook that's going to be in yeah. the restaurant cooking? Is the bed going to be in the, the right spot where the, the the housekeeping can actually take the sheets off without hitting the back dresser? Like all these things is laid out perfectly in VR. That's why we were so thrilled to have Mancini Duffy be part of this because architects have been doing this forever. Yes. And they have yes. the know-how, the experience, and the talent to actually bring the brand properly into VR. I want them to be such an important piece. If they're building Starbucks or they're building Peloton Studios or they're building car dealerships, that's the company you want to properly take your brand and represent it into another medium. Yes. Uh, so it's not being talked about. We're the only ones really talking about it. And, uh, and man, Cindy Duffy, 100-plus year architecture firm, they, they have the experience and the know-how, and they already have all the designs done. So, you know, work with work with the designs of the brand or the hotel or or the piece of IP that's already been spent millions and billions in some cases. All that work yeah. has already been done. And if you want to replicate real life experiences based on store flow, grocery store mechanisms, uh, again, anything, it's done. Bring it into the universe and, and continue to perfect it. Yeah, I, love I see it. what you're I doing, it. Brian. I think you're setting it up for a plug with the number one architect, Mancini Duffy and the number one hotel, EV hotel in the metaverse and, and in real life. And the Babes <laughs> ambassador, Christian Giordano. Also. Yes. yes. <laughs> Christian's the best. Phenomenal. Yes, um, he is. Gianna? Uh, I, well, I couldn't agree more with Calvin. This was such a great article. There were so many juicy nuggets in it. Um, a couple that sparked anecdotes from me personally that I thought could be really applicable to the hotel industry were, um, I think back to, this was like five years ago. So pretty advanced for the time. I had an agency present an RFP for an event experience to me in virtual reality. And it was so effing cool because I could completely envision the event and all the bells and whistles and I could walk through it. And I mean, they went through the effort to fully immerse me in what this experience could be. Yeah, I was sold. It was so cool. And like, you could use this for site visits for build outs, like what Calvin was saying, um, you know, build that community. And then before you go in, there's so much money that's invested into renovations. And sometimes people are ticked <sighs> off with the renovation. Like, 
They don't like the new configuration. They don't like that this was taken away or that was taken away or the new room configuration or whatever. So like A-B test it with your community in VR and build that two-way engagement and it'll save you money, build your brand. Like there's just so many use cases. I love it. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. You're so and right. then, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm so excited about this. And then the second thing. Oh, yeah, we thing, spoke about it on the phone too. So, I mean, yeah. this is something, you know. I mean, this is, it's so applicable and so smart and just it's the future. So people need to embrace it in my opinion. Absolutely. Um, the other experience I had just recently, I was going to book a restaurant for my team dinner at a nice restaurant in San Francisco. And it was so cool because the website gave me the option to either just continue booking on open table, take what you get, or you could use this interactive experience and pick your table. And wow. I thought that was so yeah. cool. I hadn't seen it done before. And I mean, literally every time I get to a restaurant, I used, when I was back in college, I was a hostess and we always try to see the worst tables first to see what people would take them. <laughs> so I'm like, no, 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 you, you can't do that to me. I know, I know what you're doing. I'm not going to take yeah. up that table. So it's like very cool that you could actually like consider doing that with your hotel room. Because how often do I get to a hotel and it's like, the worst room and then you have to go through the issue of you know getting the room that you actually wanted or so i love the idea of being able to experience it in advance i think it, it kind of fulfills the needs of both the property and the guests and it's just cool anything you can do to create that two-way engagement it's gonna make people more invested and appreciative of your brand yes, anything you can do to personalize the experience for people to eliminate pain points like that's what builds brand love. That's what keeps yes, people coming back. So yes, those are just a couple of anecdotes. I'm going to pass it over to Stephanie. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Gianna. Stephanie. So I am so excited and <clears throat> I actually was texting as you guys were talking because I was going to try and like say the name, but I was told I can't and I don't have any pockets on today and I don't have any lawyers in there, so I'm not. Um, Channel but, say the name. He has no problem. Just No, that's why I'm not saying the name to Channel. <laughs> So, so I have to tell you, so Gianna, to what you're saying, I'm so excited about this. Okay. So I got this insane experience, um, maybe like six months ago and I'm not a VR person I, or I wasn't a VR person. I have to tell you, but they're opening this hotel in 2023 and it's a very, very high end hotel. It's an amazing hotel and you have to get invited to get on the schedule to get on, to get, to, to do it. Anyway, you went back and forth. No, I hope I'm invited. I hope I'm, am I invited? <laughs> I want to be invited. Um, so no, it's not EV Hotel, but I will tell you, they did ask me to be on the board and I did decline because of EV Hotel. Anyway. Respect. I Loyalty. got this package. It was, to Gianna's point, un-effing believable. So first of all, Brian, packaging, we've talked about this a lot. Yeah, yeah I love it already. It was Unbelievable. Did it was somebody like, hand deliver it by any chance? It was a courier. Oh, I love it. So okay, surprise so and delight. It was unbelievable. And, and they only were giving it to me. Like, I don't know what they would have done, but, you know, Kane's at the door going, Mom, Mom. And so, anyway, it was phenomenal. So I, cool. I open it up and it smells so good. But then I get really super freaking confused because then there's a head thing on with, and I'm like, uh. and I unscroll, it's a burnt scroll. And I unscroll. Did it have what? the uh, wax a little yes. seal? I yes. I love wow. whoever did that. Whoever did this, I need to talk to you because that's. Well, I love the idea of having a fragrance in the box because it the was, are so was known for unbelievable. their scent. So yes. to be able to experience yeah. that, that's brilliant. I'm going to steal that one. That's good. So I open this scroll, okay, and yeah. it's to me, and everything is, you know, obviously my name is spelled differently. And it's like, it's not, this is not manufactured, it's hand calligraphy, you know, written. Wow. And it was unbelievable and so and and so a couple things so they are saying put this on and experience our hotel and then we want you to pick your room so and cool. so it gives you step one two three four gianna there's freaking sense that you open and okay you you in front of you on the invite list stephanie <laughs> And I need to experience this. It was crazy. And so you go in and like, here's the restaurant. And then you can smell the restaurant. You can smell. No way. And then it's like, here's your table. And there's That's ocean awesome. over here. And then there's like animals over here. That it was unbelievable. Sold. Yeah. Sold. Like, wow. I have to try that. Wow. I wasn't I'm thinking gonna, I'm going to guess the Satai group. I wasn't thinking that it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wasn't thinking about the price any longer. 
I, I was not thinking about it at all. I was thinking on how do I get there? How do yeah. I, how do I, okay, how far do I have to push this out to make sure I do every single experience? But wow. it didn't stop because, there, you guys. Yeah. It went to the excursions. So do you want to take our private yacht cruise? Do you mm. want to go fishing? Do you want, and it puts you on the boat. And so you see like the things around you and it's the actual the boat. Evoking the emotions. Yeah. It was unbelievable. And then it mm -hmm. said, you know, like here are some of the kid experiences. And then it says at this time, switch to your 12 to 14 year old. At this time, switch. And you can Amazing. choose the voices. I chose a super hot, like British. <laughs> um, but you can like choose who's like telling, walking you through this experience. The experience is supposed to take 20 minutes. It took an hour and 10 minutes. I did wow. it three times wow. and I shared it with 10 friends. I called people to come over to do this. It was unbelievable. See, 10 people to your did point, that is so smart because they probably spent a pretty penny yeah. on that promotional piece. But yeah. look at that word of mouth advertising. The ROI. Look at, is look, right, look at but then Gianna, scale. but then here, but here's the other thing on top of that. Yes, you're right. But here's the other thing. Do you want to keep your headpiece? Probably huge. Do you want to keep your headpiece? If you do, download our app here, and this is how much it is, and it's like two hundred forty-nine dollars, oh, so but it was ninety-nine dollars. I didn't have to send it back, and they yeah, kept uploading with more experiences. Wow. It was and unbelievable. I, and I love your oh, comment about all man. talk about money went out the window because I feel that when you're able to evoke that emotion in people, people don't care. They don't no, care what no. it costs. They, they want that feeling. They're hitting, they're hitting this right here. Yeah. yeah they and Gianna, that and that's feeling. exactly right. Because I will tell you this. All goes out the window. Yeah. All, all of the right things, here. All of the things that you were talking about with hotels, like I'm the biggest snob in the entire world. With the seats, I'm the entire – I am a nightmare, and that's why Ken wanted me to be on the board because I am a nightmare service Nazi, okay? Yep. This okay. will be the most expensive we need stay. To be BFFs. Yeah. <laughs> this will be the most expensive stay of my entire life. Like this will be the most – and I do not care. I, Just put the headset on and go lay in your living room and you're okay, fine. Okay, Kevin. Yeah. But you will take away <laughs> so much from the experience. Right. You know? Right. And I've and, told and so you many go people. There, yeah. You will also, your, like your senses will be so heightened. And yeah, I'm so excited. Now what, here's my, I don't know which hotel this is, but Ooh. they need to be super careful that they deliver because yeah, studies have shown that, that when people, yeah, yeah. people it does expectations, set an expectation, if anything falls flat, yeah. then the brand yeah. love goes yeah, like, yeah. out the window. 100%. Well, and, the, and so I actually said they to them, have a good execution team. you're exactly right. Because I yeah. told them while I've told 50 people about this experience, I will tell 550 about it mm -hmm. if it's not what it is. That's, <laughs> exactly. And shows that you will tell more about a bad experience. Exactly. exactly. That's right. But so, I mean, well, they, this keep, is, they keep going and is, they keep going and they keep, so like it's been, this is, this months. is it. This is fire right, right here, man. And, 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 right here, live on the hospitality 360. And, and it keeps, it keeps, but you know what? Look, 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 you don't even have to really see and be there, but you can tell by Stephanie's yeah. enthusiasm, just describing it. Yeah. She was on fire looking at that thing. I mean, you and guys was come on a scent, like That's a scent, a you get like, ad. you get like, you get like sand and you can like smell outside and it's tropical. Then you can Amazing. smell the restaurant. Then you can smell the lobby. Like that's like a next level thing. And they keep oh, yeah. updating it. So like, you're like, Oh, Hey, we we hope to have this experience by the time that you're there, take a look. And then it says, would you like to be part of, so Gianna, to your point about kind of the data, would you like to be part of our use case? If you do, it's $49 or $99 and you can choose the 10 colors that you like from the color wheel that blah, blah, blah. So you feel like you're part of this experience. Hey Steph, is the uh, hardware or the, the VR glasses, are they branded? The hotel yes. brand? Okay, no. Oh, they're not branded. Mm -mm. And I, but I, we, we know the people, so they won't. Yeah. I, I already know what Brian's going <clears> to <throat> tell me after the show. Yeah. What am I going to tell you? I already know what's going to happen. Oh, now you're not saying it live? I, what I'm you, already what is this? about it. Oh, uh, I don't want to do that. You want to do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I want you I'll to come to your hotel, hotel even without the headset. Brian, okay. Brian doesn't ask a question if there's not an answer. <laughs> you know? Mm. So No, I don't. <laughs> All right, guys, my turn. My turn. Yeah, yeah. My turn. <laughs> Jeff, my turn. <laughs> Jeff. So, I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna talk about one more utility, you know, of the metaverse when it comes to you know hoteliers and things of the nature. And I think you're gonna like this, Calvin. And then I'm gonna go classic Jeff and bring it back to football. So um the first part is 
um, you know, for, for the owner, for the hotel, the training aspect that you can get to the employees. I think the, Ooh. I mean, that experience of dealing with guests and not knowing what they're going to say, or just kind of anticipating how they're going to react. I mean, you can't, you can't teach that any better than, you know, a real life experience or feeling like a real life experience. So, um, there's just so much utility. That was just one more way. Um, and then going back to, you know, just how real and how unique the, uh, you know, these virtual reality experiences are in football. Uh, we use a company called Striver and it's a company that essentially takes all of the data from a practice, puts the sound in, puts the whole field, you know, you turn your head left and it's the left side of the field. You turn your head right and it's the right side of the field. And it was just such a great training program because uh, it gives a quarterback more reps. It gets a player who's maybe not out there getting the actual practice reps, the ability to get that same experience and get more done. So, um, you know, I, I just see this this metaverse as as so awesome for everybody from the user to the to people that are you know monetizing it. Um, it's it's endless. So. Hey Jeff, I got a question awesome. is how how often do you guys right now currently in the NFL focus on the metaverse or even doing things, whether it's the NFL or the team? You know, I don't I don't know. That's probably above <laughs> above my pay grade. I'm sure that there's some workings going on with the NFL and the metaverse. You know, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not too inclined for that, but as far as like the VR programs that, mm -hmm. that I was referencing, it's, it's super team to team. So it's, you know, whatever coach or whatever staff believes in that technology, that's, who's going to get the advantage. So there was one, you know, a couple teams where there was a whole dedicated room to virtual reality. And then there was other teams where, you know, I think that's dumb. We're not going to do that. So mm -hmm. it's, it's all, uh, it's all looking for competitive advantage. And I thought it was great. Yeah. I, I think it's phenomenal. I mean, look, this is not going anywhere. I think I spoke to somebody last night without saying who, but you know, they feel like there's there's actions of this that might not go through, but then there's almost to the fact that this can scale to a level that's unprecedented at I mean, just to a level, you know. Um and I think that you're seeing a lot of companies get behind it. I mean, Louis Vuitton even announced something a month ago or so. Yeah. Um, Walmart said they're going to the metaverse. I mean, there's just Gu a lot Gucci. Of Gucci yeah. was two. Gucci was two years ago. One of the best teams I had the honor of knowing out of Italy. They were two years ago mm -hmm. on on this movement, and I admire and respect their. They rolled the dice on that. I mean, that's a very well established brand. So the, the brands that said that knew where the future was going and got in and, and didn't care what all the uh, negativity or, or, or people that just didn't understand it. And still to this day, 90% of people don't understand it, maybe even more. Uh, but if you look back in time, Gucci made the, their flag in the sand really early and then the one hell of a brand and smart, smart digital asset team over there. Did wow. you guys and, see the house One of hell of an expensive pocketbook too. Yeah, I just, oh, thought, yeah. I just finished Gianna, watching absolutely. the movie last absolutely. night. I thought absolutely. it was great. I don't know I why too. it's getting bad reviews. I loved it. No, I thought oh, it was, maybe it's because we're Italian. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. I know. <laughs> I know. It's uh, I, I have to catch that flick. You know, Gaga was awesome. Oh, really? It's good. <clears throat> yeah, good I thought she, I thought she rocked the role. That's definitely Patrizia. Definitely. Oh. Did yeah, you okay. see? I mean, did you see Tom Ford's interview after he watched it? No. Uh, Bad. Oh, now he, I want to see. You it. know what? He was he was actually very neutral, and he um he didn't he didn't he laughed a couple times, and they weren't sure if they were, he was laughing out of coincidence, laughing out of frustration, or laughing mm -hmm. out of that didn't ever happen. Um, but he said that he could he can um, understand and see why they depicted it the way that it was, but it wasn't overly amazing. <laughs> uh oh, we got to stop yeah. the spoilers. We're getting. <clears throat> I was, I was about We're to say, in trouble. We, we <laughs> to I got to give a shout out to the comments today. The comments today. You got 30 of them that said, go Jeff. Of course you love. I love the it, comments. man. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff, I, no wonder I thought they were the best comments as of yet. They, they said, were. They were they like, said, Jeff, Jeff, you're Jeff. Jeff's my friend. Go Lions. Go Jeff. That's that Bates clan, man. Right. Right. Keep coming. Look at that. Look at that. Yes. Bring it in. I love it. Oh, that's cool, <laughs> brother. That's so cool. They, 
So I'm going to take it. We're, we're actually going to skip through our three minutes over time and uh, we're going to go to the last piece, but just let everybody know there'll be all the articles on the, our LinkedIn newsletter, Hospitality 360. We do it every week after this show. So if you want to see all the articles, the ones that we didn't release on the show today, they'll be on the newsletter. We have close to 4,000 subscribers to the newsletter, so one more won't hurt. So the whole Babes clan, you're more than welcome to join. Probably 58,000 of you. <laughs> 200,000. <laughs> 200, but we're growing, we're growing fast. Brian's like, get yeah. your number right, Ken. Get your number 80, right. Sorry, 80,000. 200. 80, you got to combine Twitter, Discord, LinkedIn. We are moving. We're moving, moving fast. Moving and a shaking. That's moving right. Shaking. Moving like you Let's mean. just say a quarter billion. How about that? Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> all, all, all y'all we got them all, all. y'all we got all all them. Y'all. an amazing all community y'all. in the world it's the most positive amazing community of people i've ever seen in my life so thank oh, you oh yeah supporters we, we love, know, they're, we love they're great supporters i've they're never better. tweeted so much in my entire freaking life steph retweet. yeah retweet, 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 retweet. I'm like, jack you're welcome <laughs> we, we, we brought twitter right? back exactly dorsey <laughs> call me yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right well let's get to the last piece so I don't know who's going to the Super Bowl, but you Katie. know, <laughs> this is gonna be a Super Bowl. Oh yeah, Katie Steinberg. Sorry, I forgot to tell you about Katie today. Oh, so, that's not nice. How do you forget about Katie? I know, <laughs> and, and I'm so sorry, Katie. I know you're on the flight, and I totally forgot to even say you were supposed to be on the show. And I got you, Katie. Are. I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got Stephanie Mallet got my back. So Katie Steinberg, we missed you. I know you're on the flight to the Super Bowl to this great Super Bowl party. She even invited the whole EV team to go. And she did. You know, I think she'll probably be hanging out with David Meltzer, another Bapes ambassador, by the way, if I can just drop yeah. every Bapes ambassador. <laughs> God, Brian, just we're going to have to get you your own segment. Bapes playing heavy. <laughs> so, you know, so Katie, we miss you, but we'll see you next week. You know, have have a great time, have fun. You know, just don't, don't keep yelling EV everywhere you go. It's okay. Oh, and just uh, on a side, you're probably going to see Cam Jordan doing a lot of broadcasting. At <laughs> also a Babe's founding partner and an wow, amazing Babe's Wow, Brian. Brian. Just wow. Yeah, I mean, really, Brian? Well, really? Just wow, Brian. That's what we do, man. We'll, we'll, just, we'll just cut this scene right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Chris, this is going to be a Super Bowl like none other. And I'm not talking about the game. I'm talking about the Super Bowl ads. You got four crypto exchanges that are taking the ad. Coinbase, FTX. We knew Crypto.com for sure. There was no doubt about that since they got their name on the Staples Arena. You know, it's $7 million for a 30-second ad. How about the brand marketing? Brand marketing. You know, the, I guess the most intriguing part of these ads, and I'll go back to the crypto piece, is Booking.com bought an ad. And they're going to bring my guy in, the most interesting man in the world, into the ad from the Dos Equis commercials. <laughs> so... <laughs> Well, I, I really think the new age. I thought you were talking about Brian. I did too. I, I, was, I looked up. I was like, Brian, you're going? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so the original Dos Equis guy is coming back? Yeah, they got I him in the ad it. with Booking.com. That's like the Verizon I, guy. I, going I had him print. at a Google event. I love it. At a yeah, yeah. I mean, he was awesome. He's smoking. He is just saying. He's like 80. Yeah. Again, he's smoking. Oh, so is Brian, and he's cute. I mean, yeah. I'm not 80. <laughs> you for Inside, 81. my like organs and soul is 150 years old. But 156. Yeah, I'm I'm get it right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get back to the article. Yeah. Get great back article. To the article. So, I would say with Booking.com, it's it's interesting. I I don't know why they're doing this. I have no idea. It makes no sense to me, <laughs> but well, who did William Shatner? It was um, Priceline. Priceline, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Booking.com owns Priceline, so I guess they're getting away from you know going with Shatner, and maybe they don't want to get that effect anymore. <laughs> 
So, and maybe they're upset with Shatner going on the Amazon Blue Origin trip to space. So, you know, that could be it. Too. He didn't use Priceline to book his ticket. I guess. Yeah, yeah, he didn't. He didn't book his <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, here we uh, go. Uh, hey, Lisa, no, we didn't go off the rails here. This has been a great show. I think yeah, Gianna is, is I key. love this show. This is one of key. the best. Yeah. Hey, Lisa, I'll come back anytime, you guys. <laughs> it's, it's Casa Gianna. <laughs> so, but I, I would tell you so, and the other aspect of this is BitPay. But BitPay is going to be able to do, they're going to be part of the game broadcast in Canada only. Um, and it's not going to be in the U.S., but if you know BitPay, <laughs> that's what the current hotel structure is, where if they accept crypto, it goes to BitPay and then the hotel gets paid from BitPay. So this is going to be an interesting Super Bowl. I'm excited to see these exchanges get on there. Mm -hmm. It just furthers our vision with the EV Hotel and what we're doing. And the excitement is all there. You know, the world's going to be able to see crypto. If they don't know what crypto is and they don't know what NFT is, I could tell them, if you don't know crypto, go watch the Super Bowl. If you don't know NFT, go find out where Bapes is <laughs> on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn and join the Babes clan. So, Ken, are we going to talk about those articles or are you just, or no? Are we going to go yeah, around yeah. and talk about them? Okay. Yeah, no, no, we are. We are. So, I'm, I'm going to actually start with Jeff. And, Jeff, what's your thoughts on these ads in the Super Bowl? I know um, you're very familiar with the Super Bowl as well. You know, <laughs> quite. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of, I mean, that's a lot of competition right there in one Super Bowl. That's a lot of content being pushed to the consumer, um, you know, about crypto exchanges. And I think, like you said, it's going to be great for our community. It's going to just press it farther, maybe into eyes that have never, you know, thought about. There's probably few people who have never heard about cryptocurrency, but it probably validates it for a lot of people, um, you know, who maybe don't think highly of it or think it's a fad. So uh, I'm excited for it. It's crazy that uh, you know, the ads are around $7 million for 30 seconds, but, uh, I mean, obviously it's worth it. You know, people keep paying more and more. So obviously they're, people are seeing returns from it. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So <laughs> then the comments but, are killing me. <laughs> I just see go Jeff, everything on the right side of my screen. These are my biggest hype people. I love it. I, this is amazing. And I'm hitting yeah. on Calvin. Who knew? Yeah. 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 Of course. Of course. Stephanie. Um, so this is let me let me tell you where I am on this. Couple things. When I was working with Brian for the whitelist stuff for babes, and I was going after some some really heavy hitters that were that are brilliant minds, so many people don't know yet and they don't understand. And so what I was wishing when I was going through the article, Ken, was that there was more differentiators. Like the article was great from from an actual um, content perspective, but people still don't know. People still go don't. Jeff. Go Sorry. Jeff. Hey Bye -bye Jeff. Go. Again. Go Jeff. <laughs> um, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm just gonna do be a cheerleader for Jeff. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I really wish that there was some more differentiators. I wish there was some more education. For I feel like mm -hmm. there's a piece of the market that just doesn't get it. And I wish that there was a, a non -kin, kin YouTube video that he sent me that I still didn't understand. Um, I wish that there was a better way for people to do these key differentiators and really know and understand and feel like they're capable to actually participate. That's what I'll say. Well said. Go Jeff. Go yeah. Jeff. No, I just, no it just worries. validates so, it for those Gianna, people. I know, um, you I know, know, I think you have to jet out of here. So, you're more than welcome. I gotta hop in a minute. I was just the only thing I was gonna say is I think it's interesting that there are so many traditional brands that are like doing things that aren't traditional ads in the metaverse. I mean, um, at the Super Bowl this year, like I think it's Miller Lite is like doing a bar in the metaverse. I read mm -hmm. and like State Farms doing a TikTok thing for fans it's it's like a challenge like a competition so there's all these brands that are doing more integrated campaigns as opposed to just like dumping seven million on a mm. super bowl ad but then these like super like web three forward thinking tech you know crypto companies are like just going straight traditional like that to me is like huh that's interesting like is it but then in my mind i'm like well is that because they're trying to educate 
you know, a demographic right. that isn't yet in the metaverse, isn't yet adopters. And it's more about awareness. Whereas like these more traditional brands are trying to like get a younger audience. And so, but it's kind of weird that they're like using different tactics. Um, so that was like, that's was the thought that I had. It's absolutely yeah, absolutely. Right. I mean, look, this, this whole thing with the crypto play, with the metaverse play, with the NFT play, with the blockchain play, all of this is not going away, right? I think they're getting more and more funded. They're getting more and more money behind them. Capital is coming insanely. Mm. There's VCs that are just like, I want to invest in anything that has to do with blockchain, crypto, NFT. So now new capital companies are even being created that way. So this is here to stay and forever, baby. That's what I say. <laughs> I like the new nickname for Jeff, Japes. Japes. I, I love it. Did you see that? It was Japes. Hashtag we got drop Japes. a Japes NFT. There you go. The people love of the it. internet are undefeated. I, I just yeah, love yeah. it. Well, they, they love... Jeff Dreskel. Yeah. Yeah. How can you not? Look Just at that. Just remember, face. Jeff Dreskel is on Twitter now. He has 30,000 followers, Ooh. too, that wow. he didn't know about. But now he knows about <laughs> That he didn't know about. That's awesome. He had notifications off. It's not that's, a, that's, yeah, a, yeah. that's a legitimate <laughs> humble brag right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, was, yeah. that was good. Yep. You see, I, I got you, Jeff. Don't worry. I got you. They got, they're going to get you on Twitter now, you know, Calvin. <laughs> Oh, wow. I, I just want to uh, quickly follow up kind of what, what Stephanie was saying. We've been talking about this on the show about education around crypto and how a lot of people don't. But I think but that Super Bowl, because there's so many eyeballs, it, it will at least get people to say, what what the hell is that? And right. they may go look. I mean, at least they'll go look probably. And, and I think that's a start. Um, because you're right, 90 percent of those people will not know what it is. Right. And but seeing it, they'll say, oh, this must be something I need to know about. So at least yeah. it'll, I think it, it will legitimize it. Interest, right. you know, Brian, you know, you know, one of the interesting things is, is whenever we were looking at the whole BAPES for the whitelist, when I was trying to explain it to people, if I was explaining it to people that were, you know, whatever, 35 plus, I would say, you know, kind of like preferred stock and they instantly got it. Okay. Yes. But, but when you talk to somebody younger who doesn't, they were like, wait, what's a preferred, st wait, what yeah, yeah. you get, language, they didn't, yeah. they had no idea. So it was actually really interesting, the disparity and, yeah. and how I need to do a better job in educating as I, as I learn more. I think it depends it's like vinyl yep. versus a download. That's exactly right. And vinyl's it's back, baby. Yeah. Vinyl and it is. is. Back. And that's vinyl a beautiful back. But but it, hey, once they see that ad, as, as as Biggie would say, if you don't know, now you know. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Love Biggie. Awesome, Brian J. Esposito. Oh, I've been dying for this this question. <laughs> oh, I know he was dying sitting there. No, because see, I thought you were just going to throw the article purpose. and then cut the show because we're seventeen minutes over. So yeah, this is all right. Well, you know, this is a babes babes takeover right babes. here. Babes and everybody that's watching thank you all don't forget stephanie and ken are giving out whitelists for for vapes so make sure um make sure you're commenting sharing and all that jazz so let's go back in time a little bit i'm going to try to speed this off if gianna has to go so no gianna don't leave or you're don't not going to the hotel this is, is going to be so amazing <laughs> don't worry it was, I'm not leaving. <laughs> it was very smart people i'm not going to go back to like the first Super Bowl, but very smart people were developing something known as the personal computer then we had that famous apple commercial that made it like what the hell is this and we need it then the internet came and you had godaddy and i think it was one on one there was a couple of domain sites that that was all the super bowl commercials you had mm. the you had the the sexy godaddy girl so you got that like you know what's going on here it created uh, engagement and they went and everybody went and bought sites then oh you could you could trade stocks online it was scott trade e-trade ameritrade it was all the super bowl ads you saw and then you had the new doritos flavor and the pepsi commercial britney spears and all that stuff and now that you see this it's just replication of where the market's going mm -hmm. and that's Absolutely. fantastic and the cool thing, I'll compare it to those E-Trade, Scott Trade, Ameritrade commercials, Charles Schwab. When they, I mean, that was every other commercial. Yep. Now with FTX, uh, we said crypto.com, all these exchanges, one day CDX, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, Ken, with, with EV Hotel. Yeah. The call to action is well worth the dollars. Someone can just go on their phone, 
download the app in seconds and it's they can spend 70 million dollars and it's worth it so things that you can get somebody's attention right then and there because of a great commercial and it's a brand new audience that doesn't understand crypto but their kids over there is like oh dad you don't have uh crypto.com yeah. what's the matter yeah. with you so you that's shit <laughs> Or we like eToro, I think, right? E Are you like, yeah, I'm a big eToro fan. Um, so that's what I'm excited about. It, the movement's here. It's defined by real money being spent to promote it to the to a global mass audience. Now, what I wanted to see in that article, I don't think I saw it unless I missed it, is did they pay the network in crypto? I've been oh. salivating to see that because that's what I want to see. That's when you know, that's when the people Thanks, Jeff. will say, Oh, it's a real type of currency. It can re like someone can spend $7 million to buy a Super Bowl ad in crypto. I don't know if they did that, but that's what I really wanted to see. And I, and I know next year we'll see that for sure. Yeah, no that's problem. a legal sure. disclaimer. <laughs> At this point, I think we threw that legal. <laughs> I'll get Brian's idea. out of pockets, okay? That's great for the industry that yeah, that's happening. Absolutely. I, I definitely think so. And, you know, I kind of want to just, you know, we're going to end the show here, but I just kind of want to let everybody know um, thanks for tuning in. And, you know, here's a, this is where you're. So. That's kind of, that's where you'll be able to find us, CV Hotel, on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I'm sure you know where to find Brian J. Esposito. Uh, there isn't a spot you can't miss him. So uh, Calvin Stoball, he's on all the social media as well. Gianna, she's she's got her own website. I don't know, if Gianna, if you want to just let everybody know your website. GiannaGaudini.com. Okay, perfect. And then she's on LinkedIn and um, you're on Instagram as well, I believe. So yep. and then Stephanie Malik, uh, she's everywhere, just like Brian J. Esposito. Um, can't miss her. Just and then like Jeff. Me. Just like me. <laughs> just like everywhere. Me. Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> but now, you know what? I've made it today because Jeff Driscoll just followed me on Twitter. So oh, I, yes. I have There's arrived. There's plug. <laughs> Love There's that Jeff. plug. And then Jeff Driscoll, you you won't find everywhere, but on the field and off the field with the EV Hotel. There you there go. We go. <laughs> and if right. anybody wants his cell phone number to talk to his daughter, just call me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, plug. Another <laughs> plug. Another plug. But obviously, thank you everyone for joining Thanks, guys. us. This was so it's fun. Been a pleasure. Um, we appreciate all the support, everything from the Bates clan, from the EV clan, from the CDX clan, and our team's telling us they couldn't keep up with all the messages today. So the internet has been broken today. Right hey, here. but we'll be, be back next week at the same time. So have them come yeah. on back. Yeah. Come Every on Thursday, back. 4 p.m. EST. Follow us on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. And we will see you guys next week again. If you want to be baptized. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> that was good. Wow. That was really good. Yeah. That term, we used that term last week. You got to trademark that right uh, now. That's really good. Look at Brian stealing oh, look, it. Look, Brian's trademarking it. Brian. I'm trademarking that. We, we are. Have, we have babes. The, the whole and community G owns the Bapes yeah. NFT. So we as a community are trademarking yeah. that. Bapes. And I so like Gianna it. doesn't know why we were doing three fingers. So Gianna, this is our EV sign. Three fingers. I can't do it. Come on, Brian. I can. I look like a babe doing this. <laughs> I cannot figure it out. Brian can't do it. It brings him back to his gang days. I can't, <laughs> I can't throw those. A lot of bad things love happen it. if I throw so those things. So much love out. for TV, for all of you. Thank you so much for Gianna, thank you. you so much. It was so fun. Yeah, it was great having you all. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Gianna. Bye, Thanks, everybody. Gianna. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye guys. You guys. Stay well. Yeah, Take care. Have a good one. So, Daddy. <laughs> that was great. <laughs>